Hello students, welcome back. This is Dr. Mercado speaking. This is Accounting 2402, Principles of Managerial Accounting. And this week we are going to be covering Chapter 21, which deals with variable costing for management analysis. I hope all of you are having a fabulous week and are getting ready to uh, start this brand new week and learning about the new content. Okay, now um, this particular chapter deals with variable costing for management analysis. Uh, we need to know the difference between absorption costing and variable costing. Okay. Now, under absorption costing, the cost of goods manufactured is comprised of all direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead costs, which includes both fixed and variable costs. Now, under the variable costing method, the cost of goods manufactured is composed of only variable costs. This includes direct materials, direct labor, and variable factory overhead costs. Any fixed factory overhead costs are considered a period expense. Now, the variable costing income statement is structured a little bit differently than a traditional absorption costing income statement. Uh, sales less variable cost of goods sold is presented as a manufacturing margin. And then the manufacturing margin less the variable selling and admin expenses is presented as contribution margin. Contribution margin less the fixed cost is presented as operating income. Okay. Management should be aware of the effects of changes in inventory levels on operating income reported under the variable costing and absorption costing methods. If absorption costing is used, managers could misinterpret increases or decreases in operating income due to the changes in inventory levels to be the result of operating efficiencies or inefficiencies. Now, variable costing is especially useful at the operating level of management because the amount of variable manufacturing costs is controllable at that le level. The fixed factory overhead costs are ordinarily controllable by a higher level of management. Uh, variable costing may be useful in establishing the selling price of a product. This price should be at least equal to the variable cost of making and selling the product. In the long run, however, absorption costing is useful in establishing selling prices because all costs must be covered and a reasonable amount of operating income earned. Okay? So there's just a lot of information uh, dealing with variable costing in this chapter, make sure that we read it and we analyze the information presented before you attempt your assignments for the week. Okay. Um, if you run across any issues that you're completing your assignment, please feel free to contact me Monday through Friday. Um, I do have um, office hours. Make sure that you look at your syllabus so you can be aware of my office hours. Um, but if, if you're not, if, if it's past my office hours, you can always send me a Blackboard message, an email, a Pronto message. Um, that way I can be able to, uh, you know, as soon as I have time, I can be able to get back with you. Okay. So. We're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into the first exercise that we're going to be covering. And the first exercise is exercise 2112. Okay. So exercise 2112 deals with a product profitability analysis. So the problem reads, Galaxy Sports Incorporated manufactures and sells two styles of all-terrain vehicles, ATVs, the Conquistador and the Hurricane, from a single manufacturing facility. So they make the two ATVs in the same factory. The manufacturing facility operates at a 100% of capacity, so they're maxed out. They can't make any more product. They're at 100% capacity. The following per unit information is available for the two products. So we have a line item for the Conquistador and we have a line item for the Hurricane. And we, have, we are provided with the sales price, the variable cost of goods sold, the manufacturing margin, the variable selling expenses, the contribution margin, the fixed expenses and the operating income. Okay, so you have the per unit information for each to manufacture a conquistador and a hurricane ATV. Now, in addition, the following sales unit volume information for the period is provided. So the sales unit volume is we manufacture 10,000 conquistadores and we manufacture 4,000 hurricane ATVs. Okay, we are being asked to prepare a contribution margin by product report. Compute the contribution margin ratio for each. Okay, so I've got the report set up. We're going to start on the top with the name of the business. And this is Galaxy Sports Incorporated. And we are preparing a contribution margin by product report. I've got two line items here. One's for the Conquistador and one's for the Hurricane. Okay, so we're going to start off by... Uh, 
first calculating the cells for each of the two ATVs. Okay. Now, uh, all of the information that we need is provided. This is my per unit information, and this is the number of units that we are manufacturing. Okay. So for cells, okay. Uh, for cells, we know that we made. Let's let's look at the conquistador first. Uh, for for the conquistador, we know that we uh, manufactured ten thousand units. Okay. So I'm gonna get my calculator out. Let me put it on this side. So I know I made 10,000 units, okay? And I'm going to multiply it. I know that I'm selling each of my Conquistador ATVs at $6,000, okay? So my sales is $60 million, okay? We're going to do the same thing for the Hurricane. Now for the Hurricane, we manufactured 4,000 4, Hurricane ATVs. I'm going to multiply that by the sales price, which is 11500 So if we can notice, the Hurricane ATV is much more expensive than the Conquistador ATV. Okay, So we made $46 million for the Hurricane. Okay. Now the variable cost of goods sold, we're going to look at the variable cost of goods sold figure, and we're going to multiply it once again by our sales unit volume. Okay, So... Let's look at the uh, variable cost of goods sold for the Conquistador. That's negative 3,600. And I'm going to multiply that by 10,000 units. Okay. That's going to give me negative $36 million. Now it's a minus because it's a cost of goods sold. This is the money that I spend, my variable cost of goods, uh, to manufacture the product. Okay. So that's why it's a decrease, okay? We're gonna do the same thing for the hurricane. Now for the hurricane, my variable cost of goods sold is negative 5750. I'm gonna multiply it times 4,000 units, and that's gonna give me negative $23 million, okay? So what we did here is we multiplied, and it's just a matter of reading what they're asking you to multiply. What we did right now is we multiplied it uh, let me see. Uh, right here. We multiplied the variable cost of goods sold times my unit volumes right down here, which is my 10,000 and my 4,000. Okay. Now we can calculate the manufacturing margin, and the manufacturing margin is your sales minus your variable cost of goods sold. Okay. So we've got sales minus your variable cost of goods sold. 60 million minus 36 million gives me 24 million. Okay. So all we have to do is subtract. Okay. Now your variable selling and admin expenses. Okay. We're going to go and we're going to look for our variable selling and admin expenses. Okay. Right there. Okay. And once again, we're going to get our calculator out and we're going to get my variable selling and admin expenses is negative 900 times 10,000 for my conquistador. That's going to be $9 million. Okay. So my variable selling and admin is negative 9 million. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. For my hurricane, it is going to be negative 1150 times. Uh, 4,000. We made 4,000 hurricanes. That's going to be negative 4,600. 4,600,000. Negative 4,600,000. Okay. There we go. Now we can calculate our contribution margin. Your contribution margin is your manufacturing margin minus your variable selling and admin expenses. Now I'm entering a plus sign here in Excel because I already have it in negative here. That way it can give me the correct amount. But in reality, what we're doing is we're getting 24 million minus 9 million. And that will give you your 15 million down here. Okay. 23 million minus 4.6 million. That's going to give you 18.4 million dollars. Okay. So that is my contribution margin. Okay. Now we can observe that the hurricane gives me a higher contribution margin. Okay. So uh, we have more left over. Uh, uh, more profit left over from the hurricane sales than from the conquistador sales. Now, in addition to con uh, preparing the 
contribution margin by product report, they're asking us to compute the contribution margin ratio, okay? The formula to calculate the contribution margin ratio is your contribution margin divided by your sales, okay? So your contribution margin is 15 million. And we're going to divide by our sales, which is 60 million. That's going to give me 0.25, okay? I'm going to multiply that by 100 to get a percentage. So that means my contribution margin is 25%, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing for my hurricane line, okay? For the hurricane, my contribution margin is 18 million 400. And I'm going to divide that by my cells of 46 million. One, two, three, four, five, six. That, I don't think I did it right. Let me see. 18 million 400. One, two, three. And I'm going to divide by cells of 46. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it gives me 0.40. I'm going to multiply by 100 to give me a percentage. And that's going to give me 40%. Okay. So we can see that the contribution margin ratio is higher for the hurricane, okay? Let me just find something real quick. Um, so we can see the difference. This report is awesome because it allows us to see the difference between the two lines. Um, and then we can identify where should we focus our efforts into producing or what should we pr be producing more of, okay? So that will take us to the next line item. Um, that what they're uh, asking of us to, to do, okay? So it says, what advice would you give management of Galaxy Sports regarding the profitability of the two products, okay? So, we can state here that based on our analysis that we did, that the hurricane... The hurricane line provides the largest total contribution margin and the largest contribution margin ratio. If the sales mix were shifted more towards the hurricane, The overall profitability of the company would increase, okay? Now, we have to be careful here because we don't want to stop making the Conquistador and just focus on making the Hurricane, okay? Why? Because there's a demand for the Conquistador because the price is low, okay? People are looking for a cheap ATV, you know, $6,000. Um, not everybody can afford a hurricane, but maybe adjust the sales mix to where we have a little bit more uh, or we manufacture a little bit more of the hurricanes and we advertise more for the hurricanes because they give us a higher uh, probability margin. Okay, so we as management have to analyze the data, analyze what are our customers looking for. If we make more hurricanes, are they going to sell? Okay, um, so we can be able to increase our contribution margin um, ratio for uh, or maintain a higher pr uh, contribution margin for the hurricane okay um, so it's just a matter of analyzing the data we can't just make a decision well the contribution margin ratio for the hurricane is higher let's get rid of the conquistador no we can't do that because the conquistador is super important in sales they're giving us a higher sales amount why because people are looking for those cheaper ATVs um, and of course the sales unit uh, uh, volume is 10,000 units. So maybe if we shift it, you know what, we'll make 8,000 8, conquistadors and maybe 6,000 hurricanes. M making a shift, maybe that would allow us to, uh, you know, expand more on the hurricane ATVs uh, while maintaining uh, a good sales mix of both the conquistador and the hurricane, okay? But um, that is basically the uh, problem. Uh, how to calculate your contribution margin and how to uh, calculate your contribution margin ratio, okay? Fairly uh, straightforward problem. All of the information is provided um, in the actual problem to uh, calculate what we need to do, 
Okay, so remember the contribution margin is the excess of the manufacturing margin over variable selling and admin expenses. Okay, so my contribution margin is equal to your manufacturing margin less variable and selling expenses. Okay, so it's just a lot of information is included. Make sure that we read, make sure that we analyze, make sure that you are careful in your calculations. Um, that way um, you don't make any mathematical errors that will cause you to get the incorrect answer. Okay. So that is it for exercise 2112. If you have any questions or concerns, do not hesitate to reach out to me and have a fabulous rest of your week. Take care. Bye-bye.